If you have watched our previous video on Johnny Depp, while discussing the importance of symmetry, we referenced a study which concluded that while average faces may seem attractive, the most attractive faces were not actually average. Rather, there are specific deviations from the average that lead to increased perceptions of facial attractiveness in the direction of sex-typical appearances. The basic premise of this article was that there are certain deviations from average which enhance the perceived averageness of an individual's face. In specific, the variances which improved facial attractiveness were those which were biologically perceived to be more male and female for the respective genders. These deviations are known as dimorphic variations. The word dimorphism simply means di for two and morphism for variance. Together they mean the two variances in human faces, that which separate a masculine face from a feminine one. Scientists hypothesize that dimorphic trait expression in males is dependent on steroid hormones such as testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Since these hormones are immunosuppressive, a masculine phenotype is considered an honor signal of immunocompetence and mate quality. The immunocompetence hypothesis suggests that male facial masculinity is a handicap signal. Only the healthiest males can afford to spend testosterone on these ornaments while suffering immunosuppression under high testosterone loads. The handicap signal suggests that the more costly a signal is, the more reliable it is, as it could not be afforded by an individual with less of that particular trait. In this theory, since high testosterone can be suppressed by the immune system, only genetically strong individuals can have a dimorphic appearance as it has a negative implication on the immune system. Therefore, it is a reliable indicator of a strong mating partner. Another example of this handicap theory are peacock tails, which are eye-catching but are heavy and hinder movement. Another approach from evolutionary psychology is that women prefer a masculine face because it is a reliable indicator of strength and fertility, and that these mating patterns originate from hunter-gatherer days. One study in specific took 73 male photographs and 73 female photographs. Then they manufactured a composite for both male and female faces. The linear differences between the male and female averages represented a sexual dimorphism dimension. Plus minus 50% of this difference was then applied to the individual faces, following which their individual texture was mapped to retain their facial identity. Interestingly enough, both the masculinized and feminized faces were chosen less than the more androgynous initial composite. This study shows that masculinized faces are only preferred in male faces and feminized faces are preferred in females. This is one of the unique things about dimorphic features. Unlike symmetry and averageness, they are gender dependent. Now one could argue, what about faces like Timothy Chalamet or any one of your TikTok pretty boys who are known for having very feminine or androgynous faces? And the truth is, while those faces may have more feminine features than most, they also have strong masculine dentofacial structure, which most people miss or take for granted. What is a positive feature for males might be a negative for females. So while masculinization will have a negative effect on the mean population, assuming an equal ratio of males to females, it has a positive effect on the male population. This is why when you're going to a plastic surgeon, it's important that their portfolio specializes on one biological gender, as there are too many dimorphic subtleties to a face to get right. This was proved in a similar study which separated male and female faces and concluded the significant main effect for dimorphism showed that the participants rated the masculine male and the feminine female faces as more attractive than the masculine female and feminine male faces. While there may obviously be exceptions, these studies tend to look at the overall population. Since these dimorphic features develop due to high testosterone prenatally up until the end of puberty, we would expect to see a direct correlation between testosterone levels in males and masculine features. One study tested this, finding a correlation between blood plasma in males and facial gender score. The experiment concluded that statistically significant correlations were observed between free testosterone levels and the predicted facial gender for males. The same study also tried to define dimorphism using machine learning and found five linear measurements, so the forehead width, the nasal bridge length, nasal tip protrusion, 
upper lip height and nose width, and seven, geodesic measurements, meaning that they follow the contour of the face, including the intercanthal width, forehead width, outer canthal width, nasal bridge length, nasal tip protrusion, upper lip height, and nose width. Together, these measurements are the most discriminating features of the two sexes. A mathematical model using these ratios was able to determine biological gender with 99.47% accuracy. So to answer the question, what makes a masculine face? The first and most obvious feature which makes someone look masculine is facial hair. A study tested this and found that masculinity ratings increased linearly as facial hair increased. This conclusion came after letting women rate the same face with various levels of facial hair. This makes sense since facial hair is a result of the hair follicles in the jaw particularly being stimulated from dihydrotestosterone, a hormone synthesized from testosterone and is also what's responsible partly for male pattern baldness. Women have the same facial hair follicles but since they are less sensitive to DHT and have less testosterone on average, they don't develop facial hair or as much. Therefore facial hair is not only dimorphic, it is the most obvious difference between men and women. However the correlation with attractiveness and facial hair isn't as simple. A beard disguises some of the lower third, so depending on your lower third, a beard can either improve or decrease your facial aesthetic. A robust strong lower third is attractive and covering up with a beard will lower your attractiveness. In contrast, a weak underdeveloped jaw benefits greatly by being disguised by thick facial hair. Compare actors such as Tom Hardy and Henry Cavill with and without a beard. While both look masculine, Tom Hardy looks better with a beard while Henry Cavill looks better clean shaven. Another prominent dimorphic characteristic is a pronounced brow ridge or supraorbital bone. This bone is above your eye and provides support to make your eyes look protected. According to one paper outlining the morphology and social dynamics of the supraorbital bone, in humans, the brow ridge is a sexually dimorphic anatomical trait and its growth and development have also been related to androgen production along with general facial sexual dimorphism. Another study modeling masculine faces noted that deeper positioning of the eyes in relation to the facial plane were dimorphic as the supraorbital protrusion makes the eyes deeper set which is masculine and attractive. The reason why is that a prominent supraorbital bone is an adaptation to hunting and intrasexual competition among men. It's unsurprising all four of these men are professional fighters. The article goes on to conclude that, like antlers, they are fixed and have been hypothesized to signal dominance or aggression. For aesthetics, the supraorbitalis projects 5 to 10 millimeters beyond the eyes. The nasofrontal angle can be used to measure the perceived protrusion of the brow ridge. The average for males is 130 plus or minus 7 and for females 134 degrees plus or minus 7. The lower the angle, the more masculine the face appears. In a study comparing 10 measurements of facial dimorphism, they noted that only 4 of the 10 definitions actually correlated with the sex of a face. The average measured values are here, pause the video if needed. One of the measurements was the supraorbital angle, showing the importance of a prominent brow ridge in facial masculinity. These four measurements alone had 79% success in determining the biological gender of a skull. Moving on, let's look at a paper published about the sexual dimorphism on nose morphology. The study compared the noses of 90 Chilean men and 90 Chilean women to find gender specific differences. Nasal projection, nasal length, and nasal base to tip distances were all greater in males, meaning that men had greater nose prominence and overall larger noses by size. Conversely, nasofrontal and nasolabial angles were higher in females, meaning that they were found to have more upturned but smaller, slender nose shapes with lower prominence and projection. I've mentioned this before, but men can get away with a lot more nose shapes and even your top models such as Mariano de Vio, benefit from nasal imperfections such as a slight dorsal hump. Other examples are Adrian Brody and Adam Driver who are both known and celebrated for their unique nose shapes. Women on the other hand with these aquiline shapes tend to get them corrected as they're such a heavily masculine feature as shown by these studies. Having too straight of a nasal contour 
or even a concave one can make men appear more feminine and snub-nosed if they don't have the pretty boy features to match. Lastly, let's talk about lip variations. While they are dimorphic for women developing under estrogen, there was also a correlation between second digit to fourth digit length with upper and lower lip protrusion seen in males. There will be an in-depth video on this, but one of the craziest ideas in science, to me at least, is that you can predict the masculinity and handsomeness of a man's face by the ratio of his finger lengths relative to one another. This is because the second digit to fourth digit ratio is a measure of androgen exposure in the womb, where studies have found that relatively longer ring fingers are indicative of higher testosterone exposure. This phenomenon can be explained since the fourth digit finger has a disproportionately high number of androgen and estrogen receptors. So depending on the balance of testosterone and estrogen, the growth of the fourth digit or the ring finger will be proportionally accelerated or decreased. In males, a low second digit to fourth digit ratio suggests a higher ratio of testosterone to estrogen. Surprisingly, higher testosterone to estrogen ratio, as measured in the second digit to fourth digit, increases upper and lower lip protrusion. It's why many men have perfectly cupid bow-shaped lips, but are often darker in color than their female counterparts. However, since lips also develop under estrogen, the vermilion heights, so the red fleshy part of the lip, are equal in males and females. Here et al's paper on lips reported that females prefer fuller lips on men to a greater degree than men do on women. Lastly, we'll be skipping over the most dimorphic part of a human's face, the jaw, because there is already a full video on the topic. For a quick summary, men have thicker chins and more robust jaws with the jaw angle or gonial angle being anywhere from 130 to 100 degrees, and for females, 135 to 120 degrees. So that brings this video to an end. If you've enjoyed the content, then support the channel by subscribing and if you'd like for your face to be analyzed like you see here, then you can always order a aesthetics report over at the Coos website.